Welcome to another episode of Up the Bridge with Sonny Pereira. Sonny, how are you doing this week? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm still so happy about last week's uh, episode where you took us through grade zero. And we kind of discovered, uh, or you know, at least for us non-Scientologists, uh, g- gained an understanding of why Scientologists are so so sort of uh, obnoxious. And you helped us, you used the example of Je- uh, Jenna Elfman, who was this very nice, sweet person you met in Scientology and how she turned into this, you know, uh, motor mouth, dirty mouth person. And you said, that's grade zero. And what you had explained is that in grade zero, which again, we're like a, a year and a half now into our Scientology journey, we've spent several thousand dollars. This is where Scientologists are told they're going to learn to be able to talk about anything, but they're specifically asked about really things like toilet issues and stuff. And they just are trained to just be able to just blurt out anything. So I I, I just thought that was a really interesting development. And, yeah. na- and now we're going to go on from grade zero. Is it grade one that's next? Yes. Grade one addresses the subject of problems. Um, and it's broken down into three categories, which is um, help, control, and problems. Okay. So um, the uh, ability gained for grade one is going to be ability to recognize the source of problems and make them vanish. That sounds good. I know, right? So um, the very first step, guess what the very first step is? Oh, gosh. Definitions? Objective processes. <laughs> no, no more objective. And lots of them. What am okay, I going to be? So, what am I touching this time? Okay. Lots of things. Um, the first part is actually the original objective processes that we talked about already with the, with the um, case supervisor, which was me at that time, which is the person overseeing we'll go through the files of the person before you go in session to see if any of these objective processes weren't completed properly and may need a little bit more work. So if the, if I decide that you are not completed on CCHs one through four, which was the, give me that hand, look at that wall, walk over to that wall. We were rotating through these four bizarre sets of commands, put your hands against mine, follow them and contribute to their motion. Um, and then the fourth one is passing around the book and mimicking. So I could just put you through that again. And I'll say, yeah, I need you to run that for another three hours. I'll tell the auditor that. So if I'm not satisfied somehow, or I think they need more, I just put them back into these. And uh, as we've learned from you in the past, if I complain about that, if I resist it, that's just going to eat up more time that I'm spending money on. Yes, it's not going to get you out of the process. No, no amount of complaining will ever speed up your progress in psychology, ever. It slows yeah. it down. You know, uh, just, just as an aside, Sunny, last night Scientology uh, premiered its new fifth season on Scientology TV. And I watched, I only needed to watch about 10 minutes of it to realize it's the same propaganda. All It's just unwatchable. But it's funny to me because they they hire these outside firms to, you know, uh, tape young, uh, record young people uh, break dancing and jumping from airplanes and doing all this extreme sports stuff as if that's what Scientology is. And I always remember, no, 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 it's stuff like staring, touching walls picking up books over and over and over. Uh, But, you know, they just, it's amazing to me that Scientologists themselves uh, can put up with their propaganda looking like they're supposed to be leading these wild lives of lives of adventure. Just, did you ever get that sort of like uh, cognitive dissonance when you were in the Sea Org that they were pitching like this exciting life, but what it was actually was just, drudgery over and over well while you're in it you really do feel like it's uh the greatest thing but then when when you sit down and stop and look back at it you're like is it really or am i just almost gaslighting yourself 
and wow. to keep going, you know, wow. you just, yeah. you just convince yourself that it's right. I mean, you don't want to be, you don't want to end up being wrong. You know, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot to swallow when you're like, and you know, there may be benefits to some parts of Scientology or these processes, but you know, as a, as a whole, and with the costs involved in it, I, I don't think any of it is really making anyone free, which is what they, what their goal is. I mean, with that ad you're talking about, where they're basically explaining, like, after you do all these objective processes, you're going to be so in present time that doing a sport is simple. And it's, uh, you know, you have control over your body, you have control over your environment. So sports would be easy for you right interesting okay yeah that that you'd be suddenly better at sports that you'd be a better at business you'd be able to make a lot more money this is kind of the carrot that's drawing people through this right exactly okay cool so, and so uh, several hours of objective processes to get us in the right state of mind here right yes and then the next process <laughs> It's not objective because an objective process is going to be one where we're touching things around the room or looking at things around the room and they're not done holding the e-meter cans. And this next one sounds like an objective process, but it isn't because we're doing it on the cans and okay. we're asking the person this question. Okay. Ready to answer it? Okay. I'll take, I'll do my best. Where are you now? <laughs> Now, now, I, I mean, I can tell you that I'm in my basement office where I have my recording equipment set up, and and I record down here in the basement. Uh, it's a spare, nice spare room. It's a nice, not, not like a dank basement. Uh, it's a nice room because it's the only room in the house that dogs can't get to, so I, it's where I get, have to record. But that's not really what you're asking because I, I assume that you would be asking me this in in my presence, and we would be at an auditing room at the org, right? Exactly. And then I would ask you, where are you now? <laughs> again, the same thing, right? <laughs> over and over and over again. Yes. Now, what in your experience, what do people do? How do people handle that? How are they going to answer? The, do they do they give the same answer over and over again? Or they do they have to like start thinking about, well, I'm I'm in the northern uh hemisphere and North America, something like that. Well, I mean, first you start with the obvious answers, but then people go, you know, start thinking about it. And they're like, oh, I'm at that breakfast with my mother, like the the, the breakfast before the mother died or the last time they saw the mother oh, or something like that. It sends them back on their whole track. Well, whole track in this lifetime, I guess. Whole track in Scientology is before this lifetime. Right. But right. yes, whole track in this lifetime. So they so yeah. where are you? Meaning, where are you in your head right now? Not necessarily, where is your body sitting right this minute? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And maybe maybe there's something good to that, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, you run that one over and over and over again until they have a realization. Uh, so we have a cognition of where okay. you are or where you aren't. Okay. Okay. And then um, after we finish that, we're going to say, indicate something which is not making space for you. What? Something uh, which is not making space for you. Indicate something else which is not making space for you. These pants. I need to lose some weight. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You had a cognition. You need okay. a little story. All right. Oh, boy. Okay. And then here is another... Objective process, you get to locate some objects. Uh, that seems boring. And then notice that. So those are boring. Okay. Oh, oh no. Well, first we're going to notice that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Notice that. Like that. And then... Notice and you pick something in the room and say notice that yeah. picture in the frame or something. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so I'll run this one on you. Look at that table. I hope you have a table there. So yes. Thank you. Now look at your hand. Oh, I'm looking at my hand. Okay. Thank you. Now look at that lamp. I'm looking at a lamp. Thank you. Look at your foot. 
I'm looking at my foot. Thank you. Look at that door. I'm looking at the door. Thank you. Look at your knee. I'm looking at my knee. There you go. So we're going to look at objects in the room and then foot, hand, knee. And those are the only three. Foot, hand, knee. Foot, hand, And now, knee. now comes my cognition. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm paying a lot of money for this nonsense. That's my cognition. So look at your knee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, okay. paying a, I'm paying a lot of money to look at my knee. All right, go ahead. Yeah, and uh, so there's just more of these. Get the idea of making that uh, chair connect with you. Hmm. Okay, like more than just my butt sitting in it? I guess. Maybe connect like is in communication and... Oh, I'm in, communi I'm in communication with the chair now. Okay. Yeah. And my knee is jealous. Exactly. Okay, I you know it's just uh, it's it's just as lunatic it's just as crazy t t this week as it was last week, but that's Scientology. Go ahead. Yeah, and uh, the next one it says, uh, get the idea of having that chair. Get the idea of having that chair. Get the idea of having that chair. I'm, mm -hmm. I just pick one object and you do it over and over. Oh God. <sighs> okay. Get the idea that it is all right to permit that chair to continue after oh. you, uh, and then making it disappear. And then you're going to go on to this process of what are you absolutely sure will happen in the next two minutes? Wow. I'm not sure of anything, Sonny. Well, then we're going to go to what are you absolutely sure will happen in the next one hour, then three days, then one week, and then three months, and then one year. And this is called goals. Goals. Ah, goals are big in Scientology. Yeah. So then we're going to move on to uh, help processes. So I'm going to say, um, can you tell me um, about help? Tell me about help. And this is just sort of a general question about what help means? Uh, not what it means. Uh, I want you to talk about the subject of help with me. Okay, like when the vo volunteer ministers show up to help out after a disaster, because that's major. Yeah, that's that's a big thing. And how does it make you feel when you see them doing that? Oh, I'm ready to get my wallet out, give more money to the IAS. Okay. And did you have any considerations about helping people yourself? Uh, I'm happy to let the VMs take care of it. Okay. Are there any thoughts you have about receiving help from someone else i just am hoping someday the vms give me a touch assist there you go very good <laughs> so i'm gonna just keep talking about you about that with you okay uh and express all your views about it and i don't do any evaluating i don't um judge what your answers are or anything i just listen and understand you and now, does that get uncomfortable at times? I mean, if you're when you're doing this with somebody and you're not allowed to evaluate and they say something really messed up, is it very uncomfortable for you or you just don't even think about it? I've got professional TRs. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing phases me <laughs> when I'm angry. Okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, so then the second part after we've discussed help, how could you help another person? How could another person help another person? How could another person help you? How could you help me? How could I help you? And again, what those are called the flows. It's looking at a it's looking at a particular item from several different perspectives. Yes. And those five, we loop through them. So mm -hmm. so this could take quite a while. Yes. And by the way, uh grade one is uh 38 pages and grade oh. zero was 29. It just gets longer and longer and more and more repetitive, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, you know, we're, we're looking at, um, you know, we've skipped down uh, 15 pages because a lot of it in the beginning is the objective process is relisted. So yeah. we, we got to skip like 15 pages, which is great. <laughs> so we only have like 20 more. 23 oh, more pages. But <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, here we go. We go through the subject of help and then, oh, here's a fun one. I'm going to, I'm going to, um, 
I'm going to say these words to you and I'm going to mark what they do on the e-meter. Okay. And let's, for the purposes of this, I'll let you pick one of them as your exciting, your most, ex the one that seems the most interesting to you. Okay. So the first one, the first one is a confusion, an unconscious person, a responsible person, a creative person, a victim, a practitioner. Uh, I mean, I can't help thinking when you said unconscious person, I can't help thinking of the Danny Masterson trial. Um, but uh, so if, if so, if I if I had that thought, if I if you when you said unconscious person, and I said, and suddenly I thought about the testimony in Danny Masterson trial, you're saying that the e meter should then maybe make some kind of reaction. Exactly, that's correct. And then you would do what? Think of an unconscious person helping you. No. <laughs> well, uh, that's tough. I mean, how does, I mean. How would they? I, I guess you would just have to say that uh, the unconscious women uh, described in Danny Masterson's trial may uh, not only expose Scientology's practices, including protecting uh, him, but also might put him in prison. So there, that's helping, right? Right. And then think of an unconscious person not helping you. Uh, uh, like uh, if, yeah, if there, you know, I if I need some information and the person's unconscious and can't give it to me. Right. So we would go through those blah, 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 until you have an end phenomenon, you have a cognition. And then we go on to the next one, which is think of helping an unconscious person. Think of not helping an unconscious person. Well, one thing, I, I may have this wrong, but in Scientology, one thing is you're not supposed to yell anything around an unconscious person because that could become an engram for them. Exactly. Okay, good. And then think of an unconscious person helping others and then not helping others. Think of helping yourself because of an unconscious person. Think of not helping yourself because of an unconscious person. Wow, these are real brain teasers. You kind of have to imagine scenarios that make any kind of sense. That's crazy. Okay. Yep. And then um, the next section, we can just kind of roll through a little bit. Um, these are about failed help. It's times, you know, you weren't able to get help or you prevented someone else from getting help who needed it. Uh, things like that. And then um, the next one, yeah, just more help. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll go on to control. Okay. Who has failed to control you? Oh. <laughs> See, you like this stuff. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to admit, this is a little bit more fun than the objective processes. But uh, uh, who has failed to control me what, this week? Um, well, Yanti Michael Green wants to haul me into court for a deposition in his case, and I think he's going to fail at that. Uh, and my attorney certainly feels that too. So I guess that's my answer to who's failed to control me this week. Okay. And who have you failed to control? Um, I'm not trying to control anyone, Sonny. That's that's a that's a trick question. Yeah. And what has failed to control you? Uh, what has failed to control me? Um, I don't know. What has failed to control me? Uh, for some reason, the thing that pops into my mind is the, the internet today drives me crazy because every you're always getting these notices from companies about things they want you to do. And it just, I just drives me nuts. So the internet has failed to control me this week. It's funny. Good. And what have you failed to control? Um, well, my, my, my lavish lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
There you go. Okay. So now um, we've run that for a while. And then we go on to subject of help. In your first contact with Dianetics and Scientology, was there anything you were trying to help? It's My giving examples, his eyes, his wife, himself. Yeah, trying to control my wife. You're funny. That sounds like a Hubbardism for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so you can answer with a condition or a person. And then we would say, okay, how has a wife helped you? How has a wife not helped you? How have you helped a wife? We don't say your wife. Again, they, all of these processes are a wife. And the oh, reason right. for that yeah. is because uh, you theoretically have only known your wife in this lifetime. So if you had oh. different wives in previous lifetimes, you have to say a wife so that if other wives existed either before this wife in this lifetime or before this lifetime another wife oh my goodness those are tongue twisters that's <laughs> no but but that's fascinating because we're starting to edge towards the idea of past lives now because we're going to have to consider these other wives on other planets it could be yes and um you know, in all of this, these these people are hooked up to the meter. And if there is a reaction on the meter, the auditor will say, what was that? What What are you thinking of? What was that thought right there? Right. What is that? That, 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 that. Until you, uh, you know, they, they repeat it uh, every time they see the same reaction until you answer. Uh, okay. So it's quite persistent and uh, invasive. Sure. But that goes on during all of the auditing. So, so then we're going to do uh, just more and more stuff on help. Uh, it says, tell me what professions you've had in this lifetime. It really actually says in this lifetime. There you go. See, now we're starting to, you know, we, we've been in Scientology for about a year and a half now. We've sp spent several thousand dollars and finally it's starting to introduced to us the idea of other lifetimes. Fascinating. What's next? So then you, uh, let's say the person was a doctor and you say, uh, you know, who have you helped? That per In that profession, who have you helped? I, so you I write see. down the names and if it come, they come up with a specific name like Mrs. Wilson, you say, well, who was Mrs. Wilson? And it's a hospital patient in this example. Okay, okay. Uh, and then how has a hospital patient helped you? How has a hospital patient not helped you? Assuming that was the profession, we're talking about a doctor. Right. It could be right. you know, a client. How has a client helped you? How has a client not helped you? Okay. I mean, these are these are on the scale of things, these are a little bit more reasonable, getting us to think about the nature of help and who we've helped and who's helped us. That yeah. seems that seems perfectly benign. I don't know that it's worth the kind of money we're paying, but yeah. it's it just seems sort of like not crazy like some of the other questions we've had. Okay, cool. And guess what else is on? Uh, I think it might be on every single grade. Uh -oh. We've talked about it. Uh -oh. The note of mystery scale. Oh, the note of mystery <laughs> scale. So here oh. we're gonna we're gonna assess it. That's what it's called. We're holding it up to the meter. We're holding, we're reading these out and noting the reads. No, not no, no about. Look, plus emotion, minus emotion, effort, think, symbols, eat, sex, mystery, weight, unconscious, unknowable. Okay. And tell me some terminals that could represent symbols. Now, when you say terminals in Scientology, that means people, right? Yes. So I'm supposed to now come up with people who could be symbols? That could represent symbols. Uh, uh, what, what comes to your mind on that? Uh, I don't know, symbols? Uh, well, it reminded me of when, when I was in LA and there's a... Um, Oh, what is the name of that restaurant? They're everywhere. And it's got the word blue in the name, I think. Um, anyway, um, 
the man who owned the place had religious symbols. The one in LA has um, all these different religious symbols. And he was looking at putting the Scientology symbol into his um, restaurant. Oh, wow. And um, he had been toured through CC and had been given like an introductory session and he was praying on it and he was uh, meditating on it. Like he has multiple, like he practices all religions uh -huh. and um, he finally uh, slept on it and he woke up and said that he had, uh, you know, a message in his dream and it told him not to put the Scientology symbol up. <laughs> That's what he said anyway. Once he got a good look at it and thought, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's interesting. Um, all right. I mean, I guess. So then I would say uh, on that one, sorry. Go ahead. Um, think of a restaurant owner helping you. Think of a, you helping a restaurant owner because that's what he was. I see. Now I'm going to be stuck on trying to remember the name of this restaurant. Well, this was some time ago, though, right, Sonny? They're well known. They're all over the place. They're um, you you know of them. They they have blues. They have blues music. Oh, I don't know. Somebody anyway. one of our one of our listeners will email us immediately. Yeah, they're they're usually owned by uh, celebrities. And um, there's one here in Dallas. I can't remember the name of it. Okay. Okay. Here we go. And then we talk about auditor how. Help on auditors. Oh, you mean teachers. you mean you mean House of Blues? House of Blues. Oh, yes, the House of Blues. <laughs> and I don't. I mean, I've been, but I don't remember seeing religious symbols. That's interesting. The one in L.A. I think it's on the Sunset Strip somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that owner back in the '90s, maybe it has a different owner now, but that owner back in the '90s was. Uh, very serious about putting up another religious symbol and had reached out to Scientology and wanted to find out more about it. And of course at CC, you know, everybody's on board and, you know, we love bomb the person. And anyway, it didn't work out because he had a dream. Hmm. <laughs> That's what he said. Yes. I can't believe I forgot the name of it. It's anyway, now I'm embarrassed. It's all right. Okay. Uh, think of an auditor helping you. Think of helping an auditor. Think of an auditor helping others. Think of others helping an auditor. Think of an auditor helping an auditor. Think of yourself as an auditor helping yourself. And then the same with a preclear, which is the person receiving. So think of a preclear helping you, blah, blah, blah. Okay. This next one is uh, more, more assessments. A healer, a hypnotist, a spiritualist, a psychologist, a minister, a religious family member, a psychoanalyst, and a doctor. What about all of those people? Well, whichever one is charged, we're going to run some processes. And okay, those processes so, are help. So in other words, you, you read off that list and watch to see which one makes my needle move. Yes. That's fascinating. I mean, I find it interesting that a Scientology list would include spiritualists and psychologists or psychiatrists. So, you know, definitely one of those might, you know, make a Scientologist needle move. You might be thinking about that. Yeah. Of course. Now I must stop here, Sonny, and point out that the needle may have moved also because I happened to sweat a little more in that second than the previous second. Or my, more likely, my sh my grip shifted a little bit. I know uh, Scientologists like to believe that the needle's moving because you said a certain word and I had a certain thought, but that's complete you, fantasy. Anyway, go you ahead. You know, one that makes the meter read really well is uh, moving your feet or your toes. If you move well, your toes, it, it moves the needle. And uh, well, like I don't know I get, why. Well, I'll tell you why, because again, this is this is very close to what how the Ouija board works. And it's uh, something called the idiomotor effect, which I've talked about before at the website, but maybe uh, this is a good place just to, to describe it very briefly. So the idiomotor effect is what is why dowsing seems to work, why the Ouija board 
seems to be moving on its own. And that's the, the, the simple fact that, you know, the, the muscles in your hand are so numerous and so fine and you don't control them completely. You think you're controlling your hands, you're not. And so the little motions of your hand that you don't perceive are moving that Ouija board piece. And it, you can, once you realize that, you realize that's what's going on with the e-meter. There's simply no way you can hold the cans of an e-meter perfectly still. It's it's literally impossible. The human being cannot control the tiny fluctuations of the ideomotor effect. And so you can see it's the worst possible way to measure what's going on in your head because the influence of the hand is going to overwhelm that. So when the needle moves, is it because you've had a thought or because something in your hand is changing its grip? So that's why it's it's just garbage as a scientific instrument because there's too many variables. And you know, it's not just the grip, but it's the salt content of your sweat, how much you're sweating. All those things can affect what that machine is reading that have nothing to do with what's going on in your head. So I just want to point that out because I have been saying things like I have a thought and you see a reading and I've just been going along with that. But of course, it's just nonsense. And I know there are Scientologists who are hearing this who are outraged. They can't believe I'm saying these things. But if they give it a thought, they will realize that if you really want to try to measure what's going on in your head, you will not be holding sensors in your hands. It doesn't make any sense, except if you're trying to use a parlor trick to entertain people. And that's basically all that is. Okay, I'm sorry for that aside. Sonny, you were asking- A parlor me, trick that costs, what, five grand, seven grand? I don't even know how much they are. Well, in hundreds of dollars an hour, once you get to the upper levels, I mean, just incredible. Well, I'm talking about the meter itself. Oh, the meter itself, right. The meat, you know, as Mark Headley and others have pointed out, there's maybe 50 bucks worth of electronics in there. And it's, you know, this thing you pay $5,000 for. And, and then, you know, they have you hold the sensors in the cans, making it absolutely useless. But, you know, Scientologists are convinced it's reading your mind and all that. So, hey, if you believe, and that's the other thing I always point out, as an interrogation tool, it's fantastic. Because if you believe it reads your mind and you can't, keep a secret from it, then you'll spill your guts. And, and so that's why it's such a good interrogation tool. Okay. I'm sorry. Where, what were you asking me about that? I, I interrupted. Okay. So with? let's say we take a psychoanalyst as the the one that read, because that was the one that we started talking about, I believe, right. Okay. Or the psychologist. Okay. How could you fail to help a psychoanalyst? How could a psychoanalyst fail to help you? Hmm. So if, you try to run these and if they don't, they won't run. You say, because the person is saying, no, they help me. They help me. They help me. Then you say, then you switch to the other section, which is how could you help? And how could they help you? How could you help a psychoanalyst? How could a psychoanalyst help you? So you're, um, the idea in this is that you're clearing up past, uh, efforts of help. So that Scientology is discovered is the only one who can really help, I guess. That's the cognition. Oh, okay. Scientology is the only thing that can help with yeah. my problem in my with my life. Okay, good. And so we just keep going for pages and pages of help stuff. What is this? Okay, let's see if you can figure this one out. <laughs> what motion? <laughs> I mean, I read these and it was, you know. I want to say 40 years ago. I'm not that old yet, but it feels like it. Um, and it's been a while, but, you know, they're still there in my head. I Here we go. You know, but, I, you know, it's been so long. I couldn't think of the answers immediately. So here you go. You get to think of it. What motion has helped you? What motion has helped me? Someone slamming on their brakes and not running you over. There you go. Sure. <laughs> Good one. What motion has not helped you? Right. I keep thinking court motions, but go ahead. Yeah. Right. What motion have you helped? What motion have you not helped? What even is that? I don't even know what that's about. Okay. Okay. Then after we've done help, then we go into problems. Problems. Control at the beginning, which is the objectives. And then you have help. And then you have problems. 
And another parallel to grade one, when, when there's a process, there's a whole rundown actually called the South African Rundown. Have you ever heard of it? The South African Rundown. I'm not sure I have. Okay. Um, he basically says that um, South Africans are special cases where they have to have their own rundown and it, it has to be done before they can do any other types of processes in Scientology because they are, uh, they have huge, we're going to call them buttons. Our buttons is buttons a Scientology thing. Right. They have huge buttons and problems on the subject of help. And um, they have uh, like a, a pro, uh, the, I would say that the South African rundown is probably longer than grade one. It's, it's a massive rundown to try to clear up people who have, been born or raised in South Africa because they can't be um, they can't do any Scientology until they've been fixed on the subject of help and control. And okay. it's odd that it's only that continent. Yeah. Oh, it's country. Yeah, that's bizarre. Yeah. But anyway, these processes reminded me of it. Um, so now we go into problems. What problem have you had with another is an obvious one. A uh, problem another has had with you, others have had with others, you've had with yourself. And then here's one. Can you recall a problem which concerned you? Give me an answer for that one. Uh, can I remember a problem that's concerned me? Um, you know, right now I'm thinking about uh, getting out to L.A. to cover the trial and uh, uh typing as fast as I can while things are going on. And I just remember getting so tired at the end of the day, each day. And I'm just trying to think of uh, ways that I can make things a little less stressful this time, but I'm kind of looking forward to it, Sonny. I really am. Okay, good. And how does it, how did it seem to you then? You know, it, uh, there were near the end of the trial last time I was getting really exhausted and my fingers, I don't know, they were sore and, uh, I, I, I was just, it was getting really difficult to get going each morning, but you know, I, I'm fresh now. I've had some rest. I'm ready to go. Okay. And how does it seem to you now? You almost answered that one. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like I can take this problem on. Good. <laughs> and then you go back, recall a problem which concerned you. How did it seem to you then? How does right. it seem to you now? Okay. And so you have a cognition. And then we're going to talk about confronting problems. What problems can you confront? So, yep. Pages and pages. Of oh, gosh. Stuff. Yeah. I think, I think we're towards the end. Let me see. How do we, how, what's our culminating experience in grade one? Where are we supposed to get to, Sonny? <clears throat> okay. Here's one. Uh, tell me a problem that auditing would be a solution to. And then you go down to the next one and ask if he has any chronic somatics. Like, do you have any um, somatics or illness as, let's say, a pain in the knee? So you say, tell me a problem that a pain in the knee would be a solution to. Oh, wow. You keep you out of the game that you don't want to play. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so then, um, yeah, you just keep going with problems. And then let's say uh, you get to the end. Oh, wait. Yeah, if you get to the end of grade one and or any of these grades and you're like, well, I don't feel like I've achieved it. What they'll do is they'll go back to the beginning and recheck everything that didn't react the first time. Like if you didn't run it, they'll recheck it and see if it's ready to run now. And that'll teach you to keep right. your mouth shut. <laughs> and this is the, the final processes of grade one right here. We're, we're at the end. What problem have you had with someone? What solutions have you had for that problem? Okay. And I mean, <clears throat> we've been talking about problems for hours already, right? Yeah. Okay. And then it, after you answer the solutions, like, as many as you can, you answer that question a bunch of times. Then you want them to restate the problem and then run it again. Oh, how tedious. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so then you're going to run that, you know, uh, what problem has another had with you and what solution has another had for that problem. And you're going to go through these four flows, as we call them. So to, to yourself, 
to another, others to others, and then causing on pawn, causing into yourself. Whew. Okay. And what am I working towards, Sonny? What am I, where am I trying to get to? You are trying to be able to recognize the source of problems and make them vanish. Hmm. That sounds powerful. It does. Um, <laughs> so the very, very last step on every grade, which I don't know that we've gotten to them on all of them, but this one is called grade one having this. And, you know, having this is very, having this and objective processes are the same. Okay. So here we go. Think of a space. I thought of the Mojave Desert for some reason. Note two objects. Uh, I'm thinking of a couple of like uh, boulders that are fun to climb. Good. Think of a space. Uh, Sierra Nevada. No two objects. A couple of beautiful redwood trees. Yeah. And, and that would be your feeling of happiness as you've taken yourself to a happy place. Okay. You're feeling good. Yeah. There you go. That's so then it. You'll run that. Think of another space, note two objects. Think of the space of others, note two objects. Think of your own space, note two objects. Now you are able to recognize the source of problems and make them vanish. <laughs> Easy. No problem. No problem. Exactly. Uh -huh. <laughs> and that would take, I would say, two intensives-ish, 25 hours of auditing. At about uh, fifteen hundred or two thousand per intensive. Yeah, I mean, I at CC they were around thirty two hundred each. Okay, thirty two hundred a, a, an intensive, so that's six grand. Uh, again, you know, just in the light of day, these questions just seem so trivial. Um, I can see. I, I mean, the ones here on grade one were a little less ridiculous than on some of the others, but uh, I still feel like you're spending a lot of money to be asked some very basic stuff. So, but I can see how some people would enjoy it. Yeah, there you go. All right, Sonny, anything else you want to tell us about grade one? No, I think we've covered it. Well, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, hey, we're, we're well on our way now as Scientologists. Thank you so much, Sonny. Thank you. Now I will go down in Bunker Town again, again, again to witness history. Ride the storm, wait to see a reckoning. Again, again.